Hi everybody, welcome back. Welcome to everybody who might be joining us uh, for the first, second, third, fifth, tenth time. Um, you, you're all very much welcome um, and really happy to kind of see that lots of you are tuning in to these fascinating conversations that we're lucky enough to have here on Is Inside Marketing. Um, and today is no exception um, because today I am joined by Amit Mukherjee, who is uh, the head of marketing at DMS Matrix. Um, so again, another really interesting corner of marketing that we haven't really explored. Um, so welcome, Amit. Really, really happy to have you with us and looking forward to the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophie, for taking time out. And I'm looking forward for this conversation. Thank you. Yeah, likewise. I'm glad we could get the time together. I know we both have busy schedules, as is always the way. Um, but no, really, really looking forward to yeah hearing what your journey into marketing has been like um, and kind of what you see as priorities, challenges um, and uh, what your view is of marketing these days in 2024. Um, so I guess without further ado, it would be amazing to dive right in um, and hear a bit about you and kind of what marketing has looked like for you, where it all started. Um, and what kind of particular path you've taken into marketing. Um, if you wouldn't mind kind of taking us through that journey, that'd be amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you for um, setting this podcast up. And I've been one of the listeners, one of the you know subscribers of your mm -hmm. podcast. So great stuff on that. You, uh, well, my marketing journey, Sophie, has begun with Dell, uh, Dell Technologies, and which mm -hmm. spans over 15 transformative years. Uh, it started off with sales. Um, and I'm glad it did from sales <laughs> yeah. uh, and then evolved into key, you know, uh, marketing roles, GTM roles, you know, uh, uh, various roles over the period of time because I had a long stint with Dell uh, over the period of time. Now, this early role has laid the foundation for my deep understanding of, you know, customer needs, sales strategies, uh, market dynamics, working closely with clients. I also understand the importance of aligning sales strategies. Mm -hmm with the company's evolving business needs. And uh, this experience, you know, overall has given me the unique ability to see how strategic positioning and product understanding drive sustainable growth over the period of time. And uh, my career progression is very unique, you know, because it basically mirrors Dell's own transformation from a hardware focused business to a global leader in AI cloud and multi-cloud solution. Now I have had the privilege of working closely in diverse markets from EMEA uh, to APAC, uh, including Greater China, managing comprehensive marketing campaigns and driving growth actually in all of these reasons. So it's pretty diverse and yeah. very unique in a, in, a very, in a very own way, right? Um, early in my career, I worked extensively across EMEA region. So that includes Central Europe, Nordics, okay. Middle East, and the UK and Ireland. Uh, during that time, it was part of EMEA, you know, before Brexit and after Brexit also I worked. And in these regions, I've gained invaluable experiences, you know, to understand the unique cultural uh, business context, not to mention the language barrier sometimes can be very overwhelming yeah. uh, that shape each market, you know, and that allowed me to tailor the marketing strategy, which is very important. And we'll talk more about it as we go through in the podcast, why it is important to tailor your market you know, strategy or localize your content. Um, yeah. And it needs to ensure that campaigns need to resonate locally to the local audiences. Uh, mm -hmm. Only then it can basically gives you the outcome which you're looking at in the competitive environments. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, the next significant chapter of my career took me to APAC. Um, okay. And that's a very interesting region because with a strong focus on Southeast Asia, because, you know, Southeast Asia is a melting pot of Asia. Uh, a lot of people doesn't know, but it's, it's true. You know, this region is vast. It's diverse in nature, yeah. economies, customer behaviors, and provides you tons of opportunity to adapt marketing you know, strategies to cater to varied markets. Now, Southeast Asia's dynamic landscape required a deep understanding of somebody to basically you know, localize the content, follow the global strategy, and also tailor it, so which I have done over the period of time. And working closely in this region basically helped me uh, as a professional to you know, enhance my capabilities, my skill set, uh, working across the emerging markets and then the established economies, you know, and on an essential skill set, which is very important to grow as an individual. And um, to, you know, to, to sum it up, uh, throughout my career, I've done various marketing roles, um, the, you know, be it product marketing, be it field marketing, be it partner marketing or brand marketing, 
and each of these these roles have provided me a unique perspective you know how to integrate various marketing domains into you know overall growth strategy of the organization and build customer yeah. loyalty um but the role which i enjoyed the most i would say is the product marketing you know yeah. and that's where i spend most of my time uh, as a marketer yeah. and uh, it has been pretty rewarding from i remember the time when i was a first time become a product marketer of uh, end user computing the uh, okay. you know the laptop desktops and visual displays for dell yeah. uh, mm-hmm. in some companies it's been called as category marketing or brand marketing or okay. 4p marketing but you know the the work pretty much remains the same you know you have to dif- work on the four p's uh, which has been very rewarding and then over the period of time i basically transform into enterprise side manage the storage and multi cloud solution ai powered solutions which was my last role in dell before moving into uk last year to join this uh, fascinating company dms metrics which is powered by phoenix business solution limited uh, it's mm. it's fascinating you know the journey and mm-hmm. to sum it up uh, for me marketing revolves around three principles you know uh, okay. first is uh, i think most importantly i would say is adaptability you need to be adaptable look mm-hmm. the way you know our life has changed over the period of time you know yeah. uh, our priorities are changing uh, the way of interacting with customers are changing um, the day to day approach is changing the podcast has become a new norm you know yeah. few years mm-hmm. back it wasn't there so things are changing mm-hmm. at a very rapid speed and the second is collaboration because okay. it's it's very important to work together as a team and you can't do you know when you work alone you can still get the work done but that won't have the magic you know yeah so when you work with cross functional teams the ideas comes in you know obviously there will be some fiction here and there but eventually the goal is to you know uh, take the vision forward so the collaboration yeah. is very very important and last but not the least is basically communication uh okay. marketing is all about communication you know mm. um, you know whether it's getting your buy ins from your stakeholders getting the messaging right crafting the right you know uh, product philosophies or crafting those is super important you know for me i think communication holds the key we are in the business of communication end of the day right yeah, so that absolutely. holds the key um and these are the principles which i believe in strongly and which help me to grow as a you know professional over the period of time mm fascinating yeah thank you so much and it's um nice to hear you kind of distill it down into into three things that you know are pretty understandable and we all feel like we have a grasp of that and i think you're so right i mean i think it can get over complicated a lot of the time but actually it's those key fundamentals that underpin it um and and having those fundamentals right stakeholder engagement and everything you mentioned that that's so so important and and all of us can can do that that yeah. doesn't necessarily take um a course you know that's just good communication skills um and and having those kind of core people softer skills as well really important um so yeah i think that's 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 really interesting i i'd be interested to explore a little bit more about the localization that you you mentioned there um because i think that's something that you know some people have a lot of experience in some people really really don't so what do you think is is key to succeeding in kind of localized marketing how do you approach that how do you know that it's going to come across as you know genuine and um kind of really authentic to that localized market how do you avoid kind of just uh, looking a little bit hollow and and not and not authentic how, how, what's your strategy for that first of all great question um i think it's super relevant for everybody to make a note mm. um i would say it's globalization so i will also include the global part in it yeah um, it happens mostly with the large enterprises and uh, you know uh, the commercial companies mm-hmm. where where they have presence all over the world and they have a headquarter in one particular location most of it either in europe or in uk or sorry or in us so uh, sometime what happens is a global messaging comes in and mm-hmm. it needs to be dri- driven to the local markets you know so yeah. the the first starting point is basically a marketer to build a point of view marketing is all about building a point of view so build a point of view and it has to be a data driven point of view so yeah. look at your you need to know as a marketer about the market which you are managing or you are looking after so for yeah. example if i am looking after uk and i 
I need to know the market nuances, uh, you know, the industry which I'm catering to, who are my competition, uh, what is my day-to-day -day struggle as a marketer, what is my opportunity areas, where can I capitalize, where can I, you know, protect my brand share, where can I go and attack, get net new customers or net new logos, you know, or we call it customer acquisition, uh, broader term. And also protect your install base, which basically means protect your current customers. So it's important that you need to know all that holistic picture, 360 degree, and it all starts with data, you know. Um, so market analytics is super important, you know, as a, as a marketer to basically focus on getting the, you know, if you want to put a point across, it needs to be backed with data. So yeah. my first starting point is knowing the market, knowing your customer base, knowing your ideal customer profile, ICPs, is, is very important as well. So that's the starting point. Second is, let's say you are in a market which is a developed market. Like, for example, I'm again getting you towards the Asia side. Singapore yeah. is a developed market. Now, my strategy as a marketer, if I'm looking after the APAC region, will be different in Singapore, different in Malaysia, or different in India, for, for, for example. You know? Yeah. So it needs to be also macroeconomic. You need to wear a, you know, a larger glass window in terms of looking at and then basically take a call how you want to drive your strategy. Mm -hmm. So knowing the macroeconomic factor is also equally important. Mm -hmm. And then basically work with your stakeholders, you know, work with sales, work with customer success, work with yeah. pre-sales, you know, look at their priorities. What are they going to achieve? What are the target accounts which they are focusing on to drive their top of the line funnel? Mm. Or what are the activities which you're going to do? You know, mm. how can you help them to achieve their numbers? How can you merge the marketing vision with sales vision and work yeah. together as a team? And then look at the localization contact or localization campaigns. And then build that proposal holistically with data driven. Go back to your global team and pitch it across yeah and it's a process you need to start it early as a marketer yeah you know so yeah. sometimes you win it sometimes you don't win it but at least you yeah. have to put it put a case forward uh, mm. to your global team saying that this is what the requirement in my market yeah really interesting yeah and uh, i think that's really important that it does have to be well researched well thought through it's not something that can just be action sort of overnight and that really comes back to your point of communication yes. and your kind of three key pillars of being a marketer um of communication um and 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 two-way communication so communications to our customers but also communications internally you know what what are people actually saying that they're hearing what are happening in their conversations um and i think so often I mean, that's something that I think is, it gets brought up as a challenge for a lot of senior marketing professionals because you've got to have, like you said at the beginning, that sales marketing alignment. And sometimes that's easier to do and sometimes that's harder to do. And maybe oh, yeah. people are, <laughs> you know, less open to give time to marketing. And I think that can be really diff difficult because it's so imperative to us, right? They hold the gold dust, they hold the Absolutely. insights and we need to be let in for that. Um, so, so yeah, really, really interesting to hear you talk through that. Um, it sounds like you've traveled to so many fantastic places and really got to know the culture. I'm interested to know, have you picked up any languages across your career or <laughs> never spent a long enough time? <laughs> no, I did. I did. I do know quite a few languages, but not to the profession way, uh, maybe mm -hmm. understanding the basic nuances to yeah. you know, work my way around in the country. So sure. I spent a lot of time in Malaysia, so I know some of okay. the you know local dialect, Hokkien dialect and, you know, Bahasa yeah. a little bit as well, yeah. which can make my way out. So if I have to talk to local and get a few things done, I think I can manage through that. Yeah. But yeah. not in the uh, way I would like it to be because language is an advantage, you know. So I know a bit of, bit of Spanish as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's an advantage. So let's say, for example, if you are in EMEA, managing EMEA, and mm. uh, uh, it's an immediate connect which you can do it with individual or set of group. You know, if mm. you know language, yeah, so yeah. it always helps. So I'm currently learning. I'm currently learning French. I hope nice. I hope I will get there maybe six months time. <laughs> 
I speak Ready. French. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a, it's a useful skill, but you have to keep up with it for sure. Um, so, but I I think um, the way to do it is immersion. So if you do have yeah. the opportunity in your career to go and, and yeah. live somewhere else, obviously that's hugely beneficial. But anyway, off the topic, I was just interested. I, I do think that there's a whole thing there around localization and coming up with localized marketing strategies and the way that we actually learn about our audience and the, the surely the more immersed you can become in the culture the better yeah. output you're going to have with that and so things like language and culture and actually getting to know people from the country will have a positive impact um it's just obviously hard to to, to generate that um but no that's that's really interesting and i guess kind of now then and thinking about i mean what a fantastic career through dell and i'm sure there are lots of stories you can tell us about the strategy there and what the day-to-day -day look like but what's that kind of led you to have as your key toolkit as a marketer i know you mentioned your, mentioned your kind of key three pillars there but what are things that are really sort of game changers for you in a, in a marketing leadership position? What do you always implement? Or, you know, that might just be a sort of mindset thing or a mantra that you have that you, you try and um, encourage throughout your teams when you work with them. I don't know if you have anything to share on, on that point. Actually, uh, quite a few. I will go back to, uh, let's say, product marketing, you know, because yeah. that's where my passion or my personal interest lies. Sure. Uh, and one question, you know, it keeps getting asked actually by people and you know some of the folks whom I mentor um, you know why it is just not marketing why there is a special word before marketing you know mm. why there is a product marketing you know what is that special word holds you know in front of it and now over the you know period of time or uh, you know a decade or so I feel I have come to what come to terms with and after working in tech industry for so long tech marketing specifically a product in that particular space is very much like a building, mm. you know, uh, which is constantly under construction. Yeah. That is what product marketing is all about. You know, it never finishes. So yeah. it is it is quite unfinished and the improvements can be made. Uh, mm. It could be made in terms of features. It could be made in terms of the life cycle. A new product will come in. The cycle continues. And that's what separates product marketing from other kinds of marketing for me. Um, yeah. You know, as a pro product man marketing manager, you're always going back to your product. You're always looking at new features. You're always thinking about how those features can evolve the future products, mm. how they may be expanded the product for newer audience to get new logos, um, yeah. to attack some new territories, you know, look at market expansion. So yeah. which market needs to go after, how they can improve the future products, you know. So all that is constant work in progress. And I believe that's what fascinates me, especially about product marketing. And that's what made it very, very different for compared to the general marketing or field marketing or account based marketing or growth marketing. Very different, you know, compared to yeah. product marketing. I guess that's that's the key when it comes to product marketing. I love that vision of the house always under construction. I think that's a great um, philosophy to have for marketing because we we never rest, do we? We always want to seek something that can be optimized, and and that's how you stay ahead. So yeah, you're almost thinking about, you know, could could the roof be more waterproof, or could the windows be more soundproof, or you know, well, the doors started creaking. How could <laughs> we change that? And that that's a really nice kind of vision to bring to to a marketing strategy. I think. Um, yeah and uh, yeah re really interesting to hear about that I wonder what your kind of what your formative moment do you feel was in your career that kind of shaped how you tackle things now do you think it was your your role in product marketing do you think that's really where you kind of you developed who you are as a marketer or is there anything else that springs to mind there that really sort of stuck with you in how you make marketing decisions now it is. It is. Uh, I would definitely say being, you know, product marketer over the period of time, mm. uh, managing different set of products, be it hardware, be it is software, be it is cloud, mm. be it AI products. So I would say it's uh, that's what I love about product marketing because you are actually sitting in the, you know, center of the organization, yeah. and you must have noticed in the last few years or so, a lot of growth happening on product marketing. A lot of companies are investing in product marketing function. You know, yeah. because it's the heart of an organization, I would say, because you have mm. to get the things really around product marketing only. So yeah. and that's what I personally love about product marketing, you know, because you are in the center, you are getting pretty much 
you know, getting worked upon every day on different kind of aspects of the business. Yeah. You're working yeah. with getting your plan approved, uh, getting your buy-ins uh, from your internal stakeholders, uh, be it sales, be it finance to get a you know budget approved, be yeah. it your leadership or be it marketing to ensure that your product get highlighted to their yeah. messaging, to their campaigns. So you are sitting in the center of attraction all the time. You yeah. know, so I personally believe that's played a very important role from where I am right now. Uh, mm. That may be the foundation, but it all started with sales because yeah. I will go back to sales because um, it's very important to understand what a salesperson goes through day in, day out. Mm. Um, why he or she behaves in a particular way, you know, yeah. because getting the money out of customer's pocket is the toughest job, I believe. Yeah. You know, so understanding their pain points, uh, yeah. ensuring that you wear their hat sometimes, yeah. you know, and to get your buy-ins. Mm. So it's the mix of sales and marketing, I believe, which have played a role from where I am right now mm. in my career. Mm. And uh, it's a fascinating part because when I look back in retrospect, it all started with sales, you know, uh, that's yeah. where I started my journey. And then yeah. as a young guy, basically getting through different roles, different windows, different countries mm. um, to where I am now, it always gives me a lot of fondness when I look back that journey. So I would yeah. say sales and product marketing, I put them together. You know, yeah. You know, that shaped me as a person right now. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I think you, that's such a benefit, even though, yeah, as you mentioned, sales, a very difficult uh, a job. And I'm sure anyone who's listening um, who's also in sales would, would attest to that. Um, but uh, it does give you that deep and very, very close understanding of what how customers and how prospects um, are and what they actually genuinely want and what their genuine pains are because I think as marketers if we haven't really had that real life experience we can really easily fall down the path of kind of coming up with what we assume are probably their problems and their pains and their challenges but it's not true you know we're almost putting words in their mouth and thinking oh they must be struggling with this but we've not really actually heard that from them so i think to have started there and really understood how that initial part of a customer journey begins and how customers come to us and what's most important in their mind then allows you to really shape a strategy so yeah it's tough work but it, ha it helps you i think to understand things later on and be able to put yourself in their shoes as you said um so yeah so that's really interesting great yeah i mean wow, just amazing. to just to add on you know sophie because that's that's what you work very closely with you know that's the team you work yeah. very closely with as a marketer um you are passionate i think the passion is the first word of being a product marketer, you need to be passionate yeah. about what you are, you know, looking after, whether it's a software yeah. product, whether it's a hardware product, whether it's a solution which you are basically looking after and managing. So I would say your key stakeholder is always sales. And yeah. it happens to all the companies, it cut across sectors, it cut across different industries, because that's the general way of working. And it always happens the friction between sales and marketing. And yeah. I would say it's very good. A friction is good rather than yeah. being a quiet audience. A friction is always good. That means both parties are actually looking after meeting numbers, you know, yeah. looking both after parties what care, doing. right? That's what they that care. means. Care is a yeah. word. That's a good word. Care. They care about it. And, mm. you know, I think, I think that's what happens with product team. You know, they go out, invent something, sales team that this is a new product. They talk about mm -hmm. features, USPs and how to take it to the market. But quite mm. often that product is successful, then you are going to have a lot of customers beating down your door. And yeah. only do they want to buy your products, but they also want to change it as well because they've got particular needs and use cases yeah. that needs yeah. to be addressed. And the sales team is super important that time because having a good account relationship is critical, yeah. you know? Uh, and they should take the feedback to us as a marketer or a product marketer and then we go back to product mark you know product line management team or product team core team engineering team yeah. and then basically ensuring that some of the features can be implemented for the future products and yeah. that holds the key because it's a healthy communication healthy feedback mechanism which needs to be there in the organization mm. 
yeah definitely definitely and I think that's something that it becomes a challenge in obviously in larger organizations and everything can be quite siloed and actually if no, if nobody is making that proactive connection cross functions um then it, it can be very difficult and that's where you get the kind of the the age-old perception of marketing over there not really sure what they do they seem busy all the time but you know we never really speak to them and i think that's such a that's such a problem and I, luckily i don't think a lot of organizations are working like that anymore i think people have clicked on that hang on we obviously need to talk to each other like all good things um but yeah it, it's uh it's, it's so important um yeah, well, thank you for sharing all of that. It's uh, really interesting to hear kind of what you think makes marketing tick and things like that. I'd love to touch on just in the kind of the, the, the last portion of our, of our conversation here, just about, I guess, more on the not negative side, but just kind of on the challenges side, mm -hmm. what you think is still quite difficult about being a marketer in 2024. What, what's, the, what's the daily struggle for you that you wish we had a solution to or what do you think is still quite tricky or yeah what do you think is still kind of unsolved that we're still still having to work out essentially well i guess one of the thing is i would say as a marketer and i'm putting a different hat right now um mm -hmm. it's very important because that's something which is untapped i believe uh, yeah. as a marketer is abm um account-based marketing i yeah. think it's one piece or one weapon i would say as a marketer which is there for everybody's disposal to use mm. and a lot of people don't use that um, mm. and I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm really uh, curious why they don't because it's such a great tool at our disposal as a marketer to use and use it strategically tactfully mm. you know uh, so my point of view is basically and it's it's a messaging goes to every marketer to leverage account based marketing and yeah. specifically the team framework if they are familiar with the team framework is basically selecting the right account set, you know, um, also looking at the way of engaging with the accounts, sales mm -hmm. activation, and then basically getting into the measurement part, you know, put mm -hmm. a cadence to, you know, getting to a reporting part. And there has to be only one report rather than multiple yeah. reports floating in. <laughs> um, I'm very specific about it because in all co companies, there are multiple reports people are, you know, moving along with. There has yeah. to be one, one custodial managing mm -hmm. one set of record everybody is looking at so for me i think abm is underutilized in most of the organization yeah. um, i would like to see more of it um, combined with the framework of team and it's it's quite revolutionary if you look at the b2b marketing perspective mm -hmm. and uh, it turns the traditional funnel uh, on its head if you look yeah. at it. you know it ensures yeah. every lead that enters is qualified engaged yeah. ready to convert and yeah. whether you are you know, working at a top of your funnel or bottom of your funnel with the target messaging and with closing the deal faster reduces the sales cycle. Yeah. Um, so ABM can be, you know, very, very effective when it comes to being focused, efficient and eventually meeting the goals. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say that is very underutilized currently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I would like to see more of ABM and, you know, look at it. I mean, it basically ac accelerates your pipeline velocity. It strengthens yeah. account relationship. Most importantly, the deal size, mm -hmm. you know, the customer lifetime value. It's not about closing deals. It's about closing the right set of deals with ABM. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to see more of it. Uh, that mm -hmm. should be my first point. Um, my second point will be is everybody should get familiarized with AI. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, we we hear it every day. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you do. You do it as well. Uh, is AI going to take our jobs? You know what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. It's a tool. Yeah. So, uh, and AI has been there for decades. It's mm. nothing new. Uh, what happened now? We are living in a hype cycle. Yeah. Um, AI has been there for years. You know, but it was more accessible to data scientists, to yeah. developers. Mm. You know, uh, to R and D teams. I would say now it has been democratized. So now yeah. it is available to everybody. That's the only difference which has happened over the period yeah. of time lately. And for me, it all starts with four C's again, uh, when it comes to, you know, this part of aspect, you know, so first is curiosity. Second is conviction. Third is confidence and fourth is courageous. So mm -hmm. I think that's the way a marketer's role is going to evolve with AI. It is going to be almost like technology is here to stay. Now, 
look at the past transition, like industrial revolution, the cloud, social media, the internet. Yeah. I'll go back. I know it will age me, but I will go back to desktop publishing or yeah. mobile technology. You know, personally, yeah. it all starts with creative process. And then like an idea, you can actually use AI tool to refine it, to augment it. So everybody should get familiarized with AI is very important. And uh, I mean, this is here right now and very much at the tip of the iceberg, I would say. Our role is going to evolve in future. Mm. Uh, and I would like to call it a precision marketing. So mm. you can actually, as a marketer, move away from your traditional way mm. and kind of reach to a vast area of audience segment to mm. actually starting to reach specific person in a way matters to them the most, you know, yeah. in a most relevant way. So that is what the precision marketing will going to be with AI. Yeah. Yeah. And all we need to do as a marketer is to get deeper understanding. How can we use it to augment our creativity? How can we automate some of the tasks, day to day transactional yeah. work? How can we analyze complex data? You know, so I think that's going to be the key, I believe. And yeah. with all those things get right, the right message will go to the customers, you know, mm. which they want to hear, they want to trust yeah. us. Right? So that's how the AI and marketing will basically work together hand on hand. And I think yeah. the way it is going to be there by embracing the curiosity, right? Because I, I you know, you will, I'm sure will agree with me. There is above the line, uh, yeah. which is trust and below the line, which is fear, mm. you know, same like above the line marketing and below the line marketing. So it's yeah. fear and trust work hand on hand. Yes, absolutely. And that's such a good point because I think we're we're going through this almost change curve, aren't we, of, of people being fearful of AI and that's almost the kind of knee-jerk reaction because of all the reasons you said. But now people are sort of coming around to think, well, hang on, it can actually just really enhance the yeah. work that I do. We need both parts, you know, one can't work without the other, but it, AI can really, really improve some of the things that we're doing and make us more efficient, you know, and allow us to spend our energy on the things that only we can do. And I guess that's what links both of your points there. And thank you for sharing, you know, about account based marketing and about AI. It's about using the resource that we have and not um, expending lots of extra energy um, when actually there's an easier solution, you know, account-based marketing, you know, let's make the most of what's right in front of us and AI, let's let's make the most of the tools that are accessible and available to us now, which are kind of non, not no brainers in terms of how much they could help us. Um, so yeah, I love that, that, that four C's, um, kind of mantra there because i think curiosity is so important and people who have a fixed viewpoint about things and say oh no no i'm not going to engage in that or uh, you know all the old adages of oh, well we've always done it like this so we're just going to stick doing it like that you know you're going to get nowhere and i think that's pretty widely accepted now um but yeah having a curiosity some of it might be useful some of it might be not but you don't really you don't know unless you explore it so yeah. um yeah. so yeah i think that's that's really really important and i think it's it will become more embedded in the softwares that we use as marketers anyway so at the moment it kind of sits a bit dislocated on the side doesn't it where we've got to ourselves have that process of, oh, I could use AI for this, but I think that will become more streamlined as the platforms that we use have it embedded within more and more than they already do. And then it will just become part of our working practice. Um, but yeah, I think those two things are really interesting, particularly account-based marketing as well. I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Um, yeah. But it, you know, when you do stop and think, why don't we do that? And that was kind of the question in my head while you were talking about it. Why don't more people do that? That's just, it's just not top of the list. And actually, if you did turn to it and think, you know, would this, would this return for us? Would this be a valuable thing to invest in? Yeah, it probably would. Um, so it's just about resurfacing things that maybe a few years ago we would have prioritized more and have fallen by the wayside and saying, hang on, let's, let's zoom out again and look at all the possibilities. What about account-based marketing? We did that before. It was really helpful. Let's try that again. Um, so yeah, open-mindedness as well, I suppose, is, yeah. is really yeah. important. Um, but is. yeah, well, 
Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Uh, challenges, you know, lots of amazing things that you integrate into your strategies and your way of kind of managing a marketing team nowadays, um, and, a, and an amazing career as well. Um, so congratulations for all of that. We have kind of come to the end of the time, um, but one question I always like to ask at the end of the episode, if you don't mind, is we've talked a lot about marketing, um, but if it hadn't been marketing for you way back when, maybe when you were a child or, you know, more of a pie in the Sky career, what do you think you could have gone into if you hadn't been a, a head of marketing? Well, definitely music because my, uh, you know, maternal side is into music. Ah, so, fascinating. So definitely into music. I still pursue some of it. Uh, okay. From a passion perspective, some hobby yeah, perspective. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I could have given it a career uh, go. Uh, but growing up in Asia, uh, yeah. during my time, it was purely about education. Yeah. So focus was into education, you know, so the foundation was always, you know, get your degrees, you know, get your, uh, you know, get some stable work and, you know, mm. uh, move ahead in career. But things are changing now. I mean, the new parents yeah. are much more open. Mm. And uh, come on, I mean, we live in the world where things are so accessible, you know, uh, yeah. uh, everything is at your disposal in your handphone or in your tablet. Yeah. So from a consumption point of view, from a creation point of view, I would still say that you still need a PC to create, but consumption can be done on phone, on tablet. Yeah. So things are changing, you know, but if I go back, it should be definitely music, which I currently do as a passion or hobby. I oh, might nice. give it a career. So I'm currently learning pianos. I might give it a shot to, you know, do something in the future. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, even as just a creative outlet, I often see that as a correlation. Often the people who come on the podcast or other marketers that I speak to often have a creative outlet. And I think that's quite interesting to see because we are by nature, you know, half art, half science sort of thing. So I think often people are into crafts or art or music or something like that. And I think that that must help us in some way, you know, activating the, that side of the brain and, and allowing us to be in touch with our creativity as well. So yeah, well, if you give music a go, best of luck with that. And we'll definitely kind of keep a lookout. Um, but yeah, it sounds really interesting, but obviously um, a great career in marketing to date and lots of exciting things to come, I'm sure. So yeah, really appreciate you giving us your time today. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for all you've shared. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie, again. Thank you for setting this up. Uh, and as I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, I think uh, this is this is great. This forum is great. Um, some of the content has been extremely insightful and, you know, uh, for anybody who is into a different field of marketing can learn a lot and it's not yeah. about just marketing in general about the you know the experiences of the people who come in and exchange the ideas has yeah. been extremely informative for me personally so thank you again for doing that and congratulations yeah no problem well thank you for being part of it and you will be part of that insight now uh, I'm, I'm sure and um, i'm sure we'll get lots of kind of positive response back from from the episode and everything you've shared so yeah thank you for being part of the community and um yeah look forward to keeping in touch and, and seeing what's next for you for sure for sure thank you so much and have a great weekend sophie thank you you too amit thanks so much thank you. goodbye bye, -bye. bye.